So Mackenzie, let's just start off by telling me a simple setup of the story and your character. So um, The Turning is an adaptation of Turn of the Screw, and it follows uh, a governess who's hired to work in an old manor to take care of a pair of orphaned children that are also being looked after by an older nanny, but they need a live-in tutor and a, a homeschooler, basically. The, the modern version is like a nanny who teaches. Um, and I arrive at this manor called Bly Manor in, in Maine, and, uh, and it's very isolated, and it's gorgeous, um, but it, there's just this sense of uh, a life once lived that isn't going on there anymore. Um, and as soon as I enter the house, it starts to feel like something has happened there. If it's just many, many lives lived, maybe it's that, but something intuitively feels uh, wrong about the place. Like there's some sort of secret thumping beneath the surface. And, and then the movie follows Kate taking care of the children, being tortured by the children, um, trying to figure out if what she feels she really feels or if it's just uh, her own trauma taking place in this foreign place. And uh, and yeah, you sort of descend on a, a long path towards madness with her. Maybe. So, Sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about this descent, it seems as if it's both like a horror story as well as a psychological thriller. Can you talk about that a bit? Yeah, I think that's maybe how it differs from some of the earlier adaptations and the novella where we have the spirit of the novella where it's very much a psychological story with a, a woman who you are forced to go along this journey with but you don't know at the end if you can trust her or not. Um, and yet we, we wanted it to be scary as well and not just be what the novella is, which is amazing, but this sort of meditative, long, drawn out, sort of unsettling horror, but nothing that, that gives you um, moments of real catharsis. And we, we wanted both of those things in our movie while staying true to the, the original spirit. And let's talk about the location, because Bly House, I feel like it's a character onto its own. Yeah. So can you talk about that a little bit? What was the funnest part, or what was the scariest part about being in this huge manor? <laughs> I mean, the estate that plays Bly Estate in the movie is enormous and gorgeous and just so unlike um, anything we have really in America or, or in Canada where I'm from. Um, and it, it, it does have its own personality. I mean, as soon as you walk into it, you're first struck by the beauty and the, you know, the obvious wealth of the previous inhabitants. But um, also just how palpable many lives passing through one place is that it doesn't have to be like a murder was here but that there was just many births and deaths and celebrations and breakups and all sorts of things in this one house and you can feel that in the walls and I think it's this totally intangible thing that's added to the movie that it's not on a soundstage that's supposed to look creepy it's in this like hundreds and hundreds of years old house that um, has borne witness to many many events and and it, it like still radiates with that. I'm not going to lie, this movie is a bit scary. <laughs> so I want to ask you, as the star of this movie, what scares you? Um, many things. Uh, climate change I find just so terrifying in a constant, like I find it hard to be alive way, because it's so terrifying what's happening to our planet. Um, the sort of greed of horrible men in charge that, you know, pride some sort of uh, being a bossness and wealth over the well-being and and health of millions and millions and millions of people, being like hunted by someone would really scare me. So I'm just terrified of so many things. Hey, it's Lisa here with more on horror. The Exorcist was the first horror film to be nominated for a Best Picture Oscar. Now, the horror genre has never gotten much love from the Academy, though there still seems to be a bias against scary movies during awards season. The Exorcist earned 10 Oscar nominations in 1974, including Best Supporting Actress nod for Linda Blair, who was just 15 years old at the time. Now, do you like my shirt? You can get one in the description below.